Good morning and welcome to the eve, November 21st, 2018, Danville Architectural Heritage Board. We now have a quorum. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all need to thank my coworker who's covering my position. Position. <laughs> so thanks to everyone for showing up this morning. Um, first order is the previous minutes from September 19th. We have not received those, so we need to move on. I don't know if Julie will bring them with her when she comes or not, okay. but we never got them. So we can always, we'll skip that and come back. Um, third item on the agenda is the staff approved certificates of appropriateness. And Joni, if you'd like to give us I sure will. an update, please. I hope everybody's having a good morning and happy Thanksgiving to everybody, by the way. I hope everybody's turkey's doing well. <laughs> I smoked mine Sunday, so I'm ahead of the game. Um, this time we had three staff approvals. Uh, 135 North 3rd Street, work on the front facade. I believe that's Mr. Hunstead's building. He had submitted a COA to you guys previously, which had ran out. Uh, so he resubmitted it, um, to which I approved most of it. There are some conditions on there. I feel that anytime anyone's gonna do any window work that's not just very simple replacement of a pane of glass or painting or something that they would need to submit a further COA with renderings. Um, so that is part of that condition on that COA if he does that. I'm getting a lot of, and we might do this. Well, if you might do it, you have to do another COA and tell me exactly what you're gonna do. So, so that was pretty much a no-brainer with that one other than that condition. Uh, the work on the Gypsy Run Brewery entrance uh, was also approved with conditions very similar. If they are going to, in fact, replace the front door and or put in new windows, they would have to come with an additional COA. The work that was approved was uh, pretty basic and in, in pretty much in line with our guidelines, so that, that was no problem either, other than that additional requirement for further COA. Um, and then Mr. Dexter's sign replacement on his new property, uh, that was all per our standards, so I staff approved that. I went and met with him, nice fella. Uh, we got it all worked out, so I did staff approval on that one. And you guys have all the notes and, and anything. Do you have any questions about that, any of those? Doesn't appear so, thank you, ma'am. Well, all right, there we go. Still makes the process much smoother, does it, Bridget? Yeah. I would like to say, too, that I went over and looked at the, the new Gypsy Run Brew. It looks really nice. They did a really nice job with that. Uh, very open, spacious, very complimentary of the building. So I, I think they're right on track with what they're doing. Very Looks good. nice. Going to be a nice addition to that street. And I've, I've heard just some talk of possibly a deck or something on the back. That really wouldn't fall under our purview because it's not visible, correct? Uh, if it's an addition to the building, it would fall under our purview. Okay. Um, you know, and I would have, I would be happy to go meet with them and see exactly what they're talking about. I think doing. that's just kind of a think it, about stage at this point. But yeah, it's in the future. Um, right. When I met with them on their alcohol license, they mentioned it, and so I, I okay. told them the same thing. They okay. would need to come Very back good. to us. Sure. Otherwise, it looks really nice. They did a nice job. All right. Item number four, Certificate of Appropriateness. Um, the first item on the agenda is 104 Laramore Lane. Doc, I believe that, that, that sounds like your address there. If you will let us know. Being a former member of this board. That's years ago and I don't remember that. Okay. <laughs> we, we hold you to a higher standard. Thank you. Okay. No, I'm kidding. 104 Laramore, for those that don't know, is the beer engine. I own the building where I have my business. And a few years, a couple of years ago, I put a new roof on the, uh, my, on the building and we put a gabled roof instead of a flat roof. Well, it snowed last year. The snow hunt onto the metal roof until the sun hit it, and then it all came down. And I had a had an awning that was cantilevered off the um, building, covering the steps at the um, beer engine. And it was a metal; it wasn't. It had canvas over metal, and it just took it down. I mean, it was bolted on, and it been there for since I owned the building, if not before. So, what I want to do is replace it with a gabled roof that extends out over the um, the landing there where they, before they walk in uh, to keep it dry and um, 
and put two columns to support the leaning in, but bolt it to the um, the uh, building itself. I, I, I don't want to. I couldn't afford to put a cantilever on that and think that it would structurally stand. So I think that two columns would dress that up and then come from the um, bottom up. So that's about it. How is it? Sorry. I can hear you. Go ahead. How is it going to relate to the sign that's currently painted on the? He's yeah. going to have to put a new sign up there, and he will have to come here and do all that. He knows about that. So we'll probably just. Just a repositioning of the sign, probably? I don't know. Okay. That's his problem. OK. So, yeah. I move for its approval. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank None you much. Opposed? Thank you, sir. And, and back, back to years ago when you added on that roof, that substantially improved the appearance of that building. That has, hasn't that? That's unbelievable. And, and, you, know, you continue to make that, that alleyway and that little parking lot look great. So thank well, thanks. you. Thanks. Appreciate that. Next item on the agenda uh, is 135 North <coughs> 2nd Street. Mary Beth, I think that your, your name's on the request. So we had. Um, Just in time. We did have uh, an, an oversight not having um, applied for an attribution plaque, basically uh, attributing the mural to the artist or the artist's name and giving him the name of the mural and the date and all that sort of thing. And I believe I submitted to you um, a mock-up of what that might look like. It's very small, you know, roughly eight by 10 inches. Um, and so that was, that was an oversight on my part. Um, this mural was designed remotely um, what that means is we were sending photographs back and forth to the artist. He was trying to envision what it would look like, what it should look like. And um, it's, it's a tough exercise to do, but, but he had to get the design done well enough in advance for us to apply, well enough in advance so that when he got here he could get to work and get it done in three short weeks. Um, he did work with a variety of students, um, primarily out of uh, Danville High School. Um, as they put it up, they realized that it had an unfinished look to it. And so a uh, determination was made that a black border would make it look finished. And then the students recommended that the title of the mural be put along the left-hand side. So that's the recommendation here, is that we go ahead and finish up the border with a title on the left-hand side. And um, if memory serves, I don't think there are any other changes we were recommending. May I ask a question? How are you going to put the, um, the plaque onto the wall? I don't know, but I am open to suggestions. Well, we just we have recommendations on, on how that can be done sensitively, Perfect. and so just if you'll follow those. Yes, we certainly will. Yes, and thank you, and I'll make sure to get those from you. We haven't ordered the plaque or anything. We just wanted to make sure it passed muster first. I have a motion. I'll second that. I have a second. Any further discussion? Um, now, I would say that it's totally um, appropriate in this situation, although I know there's concern that it refers somewhat obliquely, maybe more uh, accurately than that, to the product. Other comments? Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say to you, for the record, 
as I've been advised, <clears throat> I need yes. to make the staff report applicable to I would to like you. the staff report. Uh, as you can see, we have a very specific definition for content in murals. Uh, if it endorses or perceivably construed as an endorsement of any <clears throat> service or product of that business, it makes it a commercial sign. So saying that, I would be very cautious about how I I'll, I'll state for the this. record that we set a precedent when the art got put on the side of Sherman Williams between the Community Arts Center and a building that sells paint. So I think that horse left the stable already. Um, and T is general. If it was Elmwood and T on the side, I would be having this. Would it would be completely? Oh no, we're not going to do it. Even if it said Elmwood, mm -hmm. but T, I think, is pretty general for what we've already approved at this board. Well, and I think if Elmwood Inn closes down. That mural could still remain there, and it would tie to the diversity of the mural and not the product in the building. <clears throat> Mr. Dexter, do we have any legal, or are you going to just basically leave it with Miss House? No, I, I'm here for the sole purpose of helping to effectuate an efficient okay. meeting and furthermore to make sure that the documents are properly in the record. Um, these policy decisions are squarely within your shoulders um, or the shoulders of your board. And so I think you've, you've gauged the uh, temperament of, of the comments here, the, the, those that serve. Also, you know, staff has a duty to, to make recommendations to you, which now have been submitted. Um, we deal oftentimes in the gray in, in situations like this, and you get to decide which way to go. So it would be staff has no leniency to make policy recommendations to you? I would say none. So based upon uh, the staff report that was presented to you and what's before them, staff would determine that it would have a commercial message and that's been shown to you. They have no leniency to say otherwise. You've made arguments um, to the contrary and that's okay, but they need to be properly documented and put of record. Um, so as in the future, when decisions are made, you have a basis for even uh, uh, rejecting or approving. You should know, I mean, the staff report is accurate in the fact that these types of uh, murals cannot have any commercial message whatsoever. So in order for you to get around that, you would have to properly document certain findings of fact to say why it is not commercial in nature, which I think you've articulated uh, a few today. Uh, but those need to be stated in the findings of fact so as to prevent um, something else, you know, if I, if I put the scales of justice on the side of my law building um, and some artistic rendering, that may be okay. You know, if I put the word justice there, does that change it? Um, advocate, she hand certainly would, mm -hmm. but to what degree does the message become commercial? And that's somewhat ambiguous. That's a question. Could, uh, could the word art be construed as uh, commercial? I think any word can be construed as commercial depending on its location and the business residing therein. Mm -hmm. So we all support art and we already have set uh, a president that there's one on the Sherman Williams building that promotes art. So I don't see any difference in that promoting art there than promoting tea here. That's my rationale. Sure. As I said, the image is of teacups. Mm -hmm. so. And that was actually brought up in the minutes when we approved this mural that we were on a real borderline then uh, of an issue uh, that would some future with the bicycle shop next door be able to put a biking scene or running shoes as art on the side of their building. Um, I, I, I'm worried that, that again, we're, we're continuing down a slope here of setting a precedent that we may regret someday. I will also add that I think Julie's point to the can the mural stand alone if the building if the business isn't there is a really good one. It's like okay, if they leave, does that need to come down? Would the next person immediately paint over it because it would not be any reflection upon them? Um, I just think that's an excellent point. Yeah, I would have to agree on that. Any further discussion? I call for the question. Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 
And Mr. Chairman, I think you're, um, when the minutes are drafted just to staff, I, I think they do need to be characterized in a fact that incorporate certainly your comments, but further say that the additional words do not change the artistic nature of the mural. They are not commercial in nature, um, that they are not an endorsement of the products sold in the business. I mean, I would go to this level of specificity because it's necessary. Um, and also um, that it's not a commercial message or a sign. Okay. Is so, staff going to put those, put those uh, that statement into the minutes? It's my recommendation oh, that they okay. do. <laughs> Your secretary will. Good. Yeah. Excuse me. And, and on a side note, I just did a quick search for diversity, and there's like a thousand different businesses that use that in their in their um, marketing, naming, any of that. So it doesn't relate specifically to any one business. Okay. All right. Back to the first order of business. Uh, do, we, do we have minutes, Julie, or do we want to hold those to the next meeting? I thought I sent them. You do not have them? Okay. I'll we can hold out. those to the next yeah. meeting. They're done. I know they're done, so. That's all right. Anything else that we need staff? All right. Did I hear a motion? We will adjourn. Oh, I had a question. Yes. I, I'm sorry. Can we go back in session? Yeah, we haven't adjourned. Yeah, okay. you're, you're not adjourned, adjourned yet. I, I just kind of talked through this brewery signage, if you could. Is there a limit to the number of signs that a business can put on in the historic district? It just seemed like there was quite a few, and I just wanted to clarify that just for my own. Yes, there are a limit of signs that they can put up, but I'm not sure. Um, how that's going to fall under putting them on awnings. A lot of different businesses have names on awnings. Because how many actually are they getting? Yeah, Steve can answer that. Yeah. yeah. This, the sign ordinance in the DT district is have, has one set of standards, and then of course we have signage, verbiage, and our design guidelines that don't exactly match. But in general, in the downtown district, which most of this is in, you can have two wall signs basically can't cover up a certain percentage of the facade. Um, two wall signs two on wall the signs. front facade? It doesn't or? say. Oh. It's vague. <laughs> it says you can have two wall signs. Typically, you'd have one on the front, one on the side. side. But if you had two tenants, you had a bigger building with two tenants, you might put those two wall signs That's on the front That's in our facade. guidelines, two wall signs? You're, it's in the zoning ordinance. Okay. We don't allow freestanding signs any longer in the downtown district since okay. 2012. There's some out there you just approved a COA for three signs a minute ago. That's because that's, that pole sign was grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. So if there's already an existing pole sign, you can continue to use signage facage on that. But the downtown district only allows for wall signage. The, in addition, temporary signs are limited to banners um, in the downtown district, but in the historic district, no banners. Since we're talking about, can I come in? Certainly. Since we're talking about signs, we got staff here and the city attorney here. Um, I know this is not this is not germane to what we're talking about, uh, but it seems to me that somebody needs to suggest to the staff and the city attorney and the city commission that they need to take care of the entrance signs to Danville instead of letting them go dark for weeks on end. They've got lights in front of them, so. Uh, Mr. Dexter, could you could you relay that message to the city commission that they're tardy in keeping the, their signs lit to the entrances of Danville? I'll I'll be happy to do that. I do understand that they have received um, on their website some citizen requests for. Um, improvements to those lightage and however, I do know that staff. Um, misunderstood the request and actually at the at the. Uh, sign on Maple Avenue from um, the bypass there. Actually, new LED lights were put, like street lights, not the signage that bright oh. to light up. So that intersection okay. is extremely bright now, but the sign is still dark. Yeah. Um, but I think that'll be corrected. Can, can we go back Thank to this you. gypsy run for a second? Yes. I'm counting, they're getting a sign on their door. They're getting, they have three awnings. Are they getting three signs? On three awnings? They've requested three awnings with logos on them. And then one on the new black metal facade, and then one on the door window. So that's five signs. 
Is that been approved? I approved the two signage. The logo on the awnings, I can't really make a determination okay. about that. I mean, you know, is that part of the awning? Is that a sign? I, or is it, it seems a little excessive, I guess. I just well, it is, sure. you know, and that is where they would have to get zoning approval with that. Are they you, coming back to us? They or? will have to go to planning and zoning. Okay, so you approved everything but the awnings? Yes. Well, no, I've approved the awnings. Whether they're going to put the logos on them, they'll have to take that up with planning and zoning. As I talked to them about that, so you know, we have no purview over the number anymore. You know, I really cannot take our guidelines and say that that on an awning is a sign. It's very vague. It's not actually. Something. There's six signs if you count all these. Well, I can. We can have them come in front of you guys. I mean, that's the other alternative because I can always say. You guys disagree with it, and we can have them show up. Do you have a thought, Steve? The <clears throat> the window signs in our ordinance don't they don't count as signs. See. <laughs> so only wall mounted signs, which are permanently affixed to the facade of the building, except the windows. So if you put letters in the front of the sign, on the inside the window, that's not considered a sign in the City of Danville. In historic districts, it's a little grayer because the design guidelines then tell us what we do on windows and how much we cover up and they're considered a sign but in the zoning ordinance wall mounted signs the glass doesn't count this is awnings in our opinion 100 percent are signs if there's letters on the awning it makes it a sign and it becomes a wall sign it's it's affixed to the building it's part of the facade the awning is too so again we have sign standards in the dt district we have sign standards in the historic district we have design guidelines and then we have verbiage in the book that sort of determines wall signs, again, whether in the DT or whether in the historic district. This is this is worse than what we had before. <laughs> yeah, and actually, yeah, as I'm reading through it more carefully, we, we need clarification because it says, add valences to the awnings with the words, right. Gypsy Run Brewery. Was well, it Gypsy Run Brewery? That's one sign under the definition. We don't, we right. don't space words. If you put that sign on the side of your building, this logo right here, it's not the fact that they're separated. We draw a box around the graphic if the words are a foot apart, it's one sign face. We measure it. We see the building facade. We measure the percentage, and we move on. Windows don't count in the DT district. They do count in the historic district because they're under the design guidelines. But if you're out on the bypass and you put something in your window, that's not a sign. So we are the stricter standard, right? Mm -hmm. Depends so on the number. We would have the final. I think you guys have the final say on, yeah, on the is, window signs, obviously. Much. The number is unclear in the design guidelines at all. It goes back to the zoning ordinance, and it's a percentage based or square footage based on your, your building facade. Uh, and then again, the number sort of, it says no more than two wall signs, but the front facade could have, for example, if you look out on the bypass, you got 30 tenants, you could have 30 signs across there, as long as you don't go over the percentage. Right, it's per business. It's per business. I understand. As it should be, I would say. Stephen, do you have any suggestions? <coughs> we're, we're, you talk about a slippery slope here. We're, we're yeah. giving somebody six, essentially six signs, and we're going to tell somebody else no. Well, they haven't been before planning zoning yet. But they're in our packet, so they... You've approved the awnings, but the, yeah. they, the, you lack the authority to approve the verbiage on them, and I think that's what's been communicated. So that has to go through planning and zoning. So what, you, what has been approved is simply that the awnings be placed. Okay on the condition that they're uh, submitted to planning and zoning for further But if we have the stricter standard, why aren't they coming to us first? I, I guess I don't understand. If you're telling us we have the stricter standard, then why are we not looking over this? We did look over it. We, um, we approved, this board approved six signs? No, staff, staff it. approved it. And I don't see it as six signs. Gypsy Run Brewery on each one of those, I'd, I'd see that as one sign. See, it says here, Gypsy Run Brewery logos being added to the already approved awnings. So I would say that's three. Which page are you on? I'm on the uh, project scope. Yeah, no, Gypsy Run Brewery. Logos, plural, no, are already approved to the awnings, plural. And then we're going to add balances with the words on it. So you're putting the logo and the words, which is actually could be. In, instead of the already approved. Okay. 
it's a bit, look, it's, guys, it's, it's very still, difficult to, to decide how we're going to do this. I mean, our staff approved it, but it's certainly within your purview to call it back and say that you would like to review it. Is that change in verbiage? It's still four signs, but I guess it's, it is what it is. Oh, no, no, no. If it's staff approved, that does not mean that you all cannot recall it. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, you can approve the awnings with no signs. Just because our staff approved it does not, that is not the final word on it. I, I'm just, I'm going to have to get clarification because I'm not seeing the same things that Julia said. So, yeah, so we're going to have the haberdashery gets their sign because Correct. they're one business. Now I've shut the page down a little. And then the Gypsy Run, they've changed it. Instead of the logos, they're going to do Gypsy Run Brewery. Mm -hmm. They're going to have the logo on the black metal facade and then the logo on the door window. So that makes, for the Gypsy Run Brewery, makes three, one three. big one and then two other ones, is if that they're, correct? If they're putting Gypsy Run Brewery, that you're saying that's one sign? That's what okay. I understood. Now I can go back and clarify and make, well, well I sure. think it's too late now, if you've already. Right. Yeah. Ask for clarification on that. I can do that. Yeah. Please, <laughs> because it, it is not worded well. Right. I can I can ask because somebody else will come and ask us Certainly eventually <laughs> right right they will and please understand just because our staff approved it you all have the power to recall it I mean it's it's your power to do that well, I'm glad you made that observation on the detail well that process isn't in its best because then you end up like what Nick went through with the mural if you've approved it and they've already invested in something and then we say, well, well they can't on. invest in anything until they get planning and zoning approval and get their permit. I just don't want to see that happen again. Us <clears throat> take the hit on. Well, like she said, it, it, we were to be the first stop, but they still have to get permits from planning and zoning mm -hmm. before they put them up. So they could, could get stopped there. So they're it's, not they're not up. And it's it important that anyone could, that gets approval from us waits on the approval paperwork to make sure that they have I, everything. I just don't want to see us have to say we want to call something back and then What's the headline? Oh, that's Somebody's paid absolutely for it. right. Yeah, we we are the ones that look like we're, and well, we're still trying to work through this process. This, this is all new for us still too. But this was what your all's intent was was to try to move some of these things through yeah. with staff approval. But there is going to be some questioning there because it is us trying to interpret what we think the guidelines are as well as you would be when you're looking at them. So I guess now the question is to you: What is the process? Do I need to notify them in writing that they need to have a board review? Are you all calling for a board review? How do we want to do that? This is the first one of those. I know. Well, <laughs> planning and zoning. Territory. It is planning I mean, and. Oh, excuse well, me. as I said, my my uh, my concern is that it's uh, if it's the three words on the valences, then I don't see any problem with that being counted as three right. signs. If they're putting Gypsy Run Brewery on each one, well, then that's getting verbose and would have issue with that. Can you clarify? That's what yeah, we need is clarification. Just get a clarification from them. It would be yeah. my vote on that. Uh, maybe vote's the wrong word, but maybe a little bit more in I depth. can certainly get a clarification. That's not a problem. So if it is, what do you want us to do? No, I think they have to come back to us. Yeah. 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 And I'll just add, this is one of those where if they had given us a graphic design exactly of what they wanted to do, it wouldn't be a question. Well, I guess my looking at these three awnings, they're, they're two different sizes. If they're putting a little valance hanging off the bottom, is that the way you understand that? Yes. One I, is going to be bigger than the other. I, I just want to make sure that the we're... The awnings are already existing. Right. But they're not all the same size. So yeah. the letters... Yeah. So I, I would suggest we start with a layout from them. What do they specifically have in okay. mind? Okay, so yeah. we need to tell them they need to come in front of the board. Yes. Okay. No problem. I mean, we, we like what they're doing, don't we? Exactly. I, and I think they know that. It's yeah, just, absolutely. Let's make sure we but again, get it right. if you all have a question, this is the time to say okay. we need to do that. Because I'm not going to make, I mean, this is a process for me to work through as well. I, I go by what they tell me and try to make it as business friendly for them as possible. Well, and, and well, sure. we appreciate but what it, you're doing. You We're not have questioning question, what you're doing. No, no, no. I, don't get me wrong. I have no problem with that. Okay. Just We just need to make sure the process goes through because this, this is the first and probably won't be the last time this happens. Right. So. Yeah. What's, what's interesting is 
this is a two-step process, certainly for any signage that's in the historic overlay. So planning and zoning will not issue sign permits without a certificate of appropriateness from this body. So it, it would have, the property owner or business owner would have been out of line if any money would have been expended at this point for any signage. So they but gone to, to one step of a two-step process. So when staff approves something, are they getting the COA when you approve it? Not generally. So it, they don't get the COA until it passes through our eyes? Is that? I'm, I'm really kind of unsure about that. I, no, we haven't given them under your staff approval okay, because- so yes. I was gonna say they should, they should, the point, the point is That's to issue right. a COA. That's the point of <laughs> yeah, it. So, um, yeah. So, so he's going to get the COA at planning and zoning then before we've ever even seen it. Well, he will get a COA, but he has not gotten their permits from them. So he could, they could get stopped at planning and zoning. because, And we tell them that we always advise them it's a two-step process. We also tell them when they come in with the COA, you should also right now go on over there and check with planning and zoning to make sure that that would meet their guidelines before we go through this. Well, if we're the stricter standard, I would say if they have a COA well, in hand and we haven't seen it, there's no stopping it at that point because well, and just an issue Steve on signs. isn't going to say well this looks yeah. like it should be <laughs> an issue on signs we're getting ready there's a, a complete overhaul on signage coming as well um, based on the 2015 Supreme Court decision on this right. matter so as far as what is actually on the sign whether it's a logo or words is going to be not only out of your purview right. but it's not planning and right. zoning's purview as well so i think it's entirely appropriate for staff to look at it look at the guidelines and say are the architectural elements appropriate per the guidelines whether they have the logo or the words as to some of your comments is going to be wholly inappropriate for you to comment on um, and yes. you know it's per se unconstitutional if you look at the content of the sign so you're going to be restricted to dimensional um, review only, period. Supreme Court said if you have to read it to determine what category it fits in, you're, it's a per se unconstitutional <laughs> violation of free speech. So placement period. materials is basically all. That's it. Th just placement. That's it. Okay. So you're looking at so, existing awnings and a staff can look and say it would be appropriate to have, uh, what do you call them, balances? Mm -hmm, balances. Uh, hanging from them if in fact mm -hmm. those are uh, appropriate and they, they meet the guidelines, then it would, I would say, as a matter of efficiency and due course, it would be appropriate for staff to issue the COA. And uh, I don't know what the value of bringing them back here to do unless you had some other design elements. Um, and, and that's quite possible. However, y you're gonna be restricted and forbidden from actually the, what is on the sign. Right. But we could we could say we don't like the neon or the color, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and generally, you know, you're you're uh, <coughs> you're recommended not to get into color. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So that's true. We can we can nitpick this thing to death, but I think with your statement about. <coughs> What the Supreme Court, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, came down with, <clears throat> I mean, that just, that wipes it clean for everybody. You are. You're, you're severely restricted on what you can Well, and uh, I guess I'm manage. looking at quantity, size, sure. number. <clears throat> I don't care that it still says be gypsy within run. Our purview right. is quantity, size, and material. Yes, I think that yes. would be in our purview is quantity, size, and material. Correct? Yes. 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 So the question is not what's on the sign, but the right. number of signs. Right. And they've been very good to work with us, so I think us just conveying your, your concerns will. I think it would be fair to, to get a, 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 a design sure. of what they intend, and let's get a little bit more detail then. Fair enough, I can do that. I, I don't can think, call them and. And if it's, if it's something they want to move on rapidly, we've always been responsive. Within the legal time frame, we'll meet whenever they, they need us to. And in the alternative, let me give you this option. It would be appropriate for staff to send a letter to the individual saying that this, these have been approved. However, you should note prior to applying to planning and zoning, uh, there are uh, quantity restrictions on the number of signage. So we've approved these locations for signs. It's up to you to determine which ones you utilize. Because that is true. I mean, I could come to you with a building saying, I wanna do 
two of these possible five locations for signage, it'd be appropriate for staff to say those were acceptable locations. Now, you can't do all five. Pick two. Yeah. But you could pick two of the five, and you may not be ready to make that determination at the time of application in consultation with planning and zoning. So that may be, if endorsed by you, I mean, I would think that'd be a very efficient process for staff and a quick to not have to come back before the body. I actually like that suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We can do that. Do we and need any action on that, or is that just a discussion with staff? No motion? I, I think staff can just take that as instruction. Very good. Very good. Great. I'm so, amazing how it works. Oh, you're, you're already uh, moved. Well, somebody said they died for lack of a second. Um, <laughs> one, happy Thanksgiving, and also okay. I'd just like to say a big thank you to the city attorney for second. being here with us, and um, we will see you at the next meeting. Have next a second. Week. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who seconded it? Mary? Yes. yes. <laughs> Democracy.